All right. Now, custom ROMs, that is what a lot of things on Telegram, XDA and phone ops have been all this while. In the last couple of years, I've noticed that a lot of people are not choosing custom ROMs and I really don't know what the reason behind that is. But I want you guys to tell me that in the comment section. But what we have today for you is yet another custom ROM review and this time it is the POCO X3 Pro running Pixel Experience Plus's latest edition which is based on Android 13. Hello everyone, my name is Kailash, you're watching Phone Ops, an amazing custom ROM and smartphone customization channel where we bring high quality amazing content every single day for you to so subscribe if you've not already because it really motivates motivates us. So hello awesome people, my name is Kalash, welcome to Phone Ops, let's get going. Now for the fact that we do so many custom ROM reviews on so many different devices and we try so many custom ROMs, I thought we should give it a structure which we were using in the past. So we are going to now divide our custom ROM reviews into different sections and you should get a fair idea of which particular area is interesting for you and you can then decide if you want to install that custom ROM or not. So first things first, whenever you install a custom ROM like Pixel Experience on any device, the first thing you would notice is appearance and aspect. Now, what I mean by that is how does the user interface look? Because of course, you're coming from MIUI or ColorOS or any other operating system and this is a near stock experience that you're getting and that is the reason it makes a lot of difference. Now under appearance and aesthetics, the first thing that we're going to look at is the default launcher. Now the moment you look at this phone screen and long press on it, you will see you have something called as home settings. Now for a very long time, Pixel Experience devices or Pixel Experience ROMs have been coming with this Pixel launcher which doesn't really have a ton of customization but it gets the basic job done. So for example, as you can see, you have notification dots, you do things like at a glance over here, add app icons to home screen, swipe to access Google app. Now that is very important for me. And overview suggestions, you can go ahead and make changes to your suggestions over here. Apart from that, you have these search options available as well. And moving on, you can allow home screen rotation. Now, this is not something which has a lot of customization. It's pretty basic and clean, but trust me, it gets the job done. Next up, a very, very interesting part of appearance and aesthetics is the theme engine. Now, this is of course Android 13, so it comes with Monet customization and it is pretty much there. It looks really, really neat. The whole UI follows the color of the wallpaper along with most of the theme icons. So Google should implement theme icons yeah, much better, right? As you can see, new state doesn't have a themed icon. A lot of apps will not have themed icons, but I feel popular apps should have themed icons. Apart from that, as I said, monitor customization is present. And if you go to wallpaper and style in this particular ROM, you do get to choose a lot of wallpaper, which are directly by Google in most of the cases. And as you can see, you get curated culture as well and very, very fancy wallpapers very very colorful wallpapers are available there and the moment you apply any wallpaper the whole ui would change sort of the theme and it looks really really nice so theme engine on android 13 based custom roms is pretty decent now next up we will talk about other customization the reason we have this particular section is because custom roms are mostly known for customization and then for performance so if we talk about customization there are things that we've already seen widget section is you know, a very, very standard Android 13 affair. So no major customization available over here. Yes, you do have a lot of options in quick tiles. There are a few additional quick tiles that are available in this ROM and they do a pretty good job. You know, things like FPS counter are not there, but basic stuff that you would require in a custom ROM is really there. So in terms of other customization, this ROM does a pretty decent job. It doesn't really go overboard, but yes, basic necessities are definitely taken care of. Last but not the least, in aesthetics, what matters is overall look and feel. Now, I per se love the overall look of clean Android and the feel with the smoothness of Pixel experience is really amazing. So no complaints there. Overall, in the department of appearance and aesthetics, this ROM does a really, really good job. Now, the next part is very, very interesting for a lot of people, especially people who own a POCO X3 Pro because performance is the name of the game as far as owners of the POCO X3 Pro are concerned. And that is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about CPU throttle test and to do and a little bit about my gaming experience. Maybe we'll have a complete gaming review later. But first, let's talk about the throttling test because that is really, really important. And while we check that, 
we go to Google Photos and we notice over here that we still have unlimited backup. Remember, it's not there for pixels anymore. So let's go to the screenshots actually. And as you can see, it throttled to 90% of its max performance and the average score was 187 545 GIPS with a maximum score of 203 412 GIPS. Now, this is of course perf kernel. It is nothing out of the ordinary, but it gets the job done. This is pretty decent performance for a Poco X3 Pro. And if we talk about Antutu benchmark, the story over here will continue once again because we get a very decent 597.12. And even if you look at the individual scores, the numbers are pretty significant. Now, if we talk about the heating, the device did heat up by 7 degrees Celsius. Remember, we are in India and it's summer, so the temperature is around 35 to 37 degrees Celsius. Along with this, you do notice that 4% battery was dropped, but then Antutu is a taxing batch benchmark, so that's pretty normal. Now, while we're at it, let's actually talk about gaming because that matters to you a lot, right? Now, gaming for me has been pretty decent on this ROM. If you're targeting 60 FPS, be it BGMI, PUBG Mobile, Apex Legends, Call of Duty Mobile, pretty much all the leading games out there, I've had a decent experience. Of course, I've not tested any BGMI or PUBG because I don't like their games and the approach that that company has. But Call of Duty Mobile, you do get pretty good FPS as far as 60 is concerned. And if you are playing for more than one hour, it's a pretty decent experience. The phone does get warm, but it doesn't overheat at all. And the battery backup in gaming is pretty decent as well. So all in all, as far as gaming is concerned, the experience is pretty fluid. You do get and Android's game dashboard as well, but it is the stock game dashboard. That means if the dashboard itself detects that this is a game that supports game dashboard, only then it will work, otherwise it will not. So as far as the performance and gaming is concerned, Pixel Experience for the Poco X3 Pro is doing a splendid job. Now next up, let's actually look at the camera application over here. And for obvious reasons, I've not installed any ANX camera mod or Gcam because that is not supplied with this ROM. You can always install a good Gcam and a good XML and have a good experience. But as far as the stock camera is concerned, as you can see, it is very, very clean, very, very basic. The good thing here is it supports all the lenses and it has video mode scanner mode and photo mode so a very very basic camera application and it doesn't even give you the best clarity this phone's camera sensor has to offer so yes if you're going to go with pixel experience or pixel experience plus you're going to have to and have to install gcam which will give you a much much better experience now next up let's talk about essentials things that you would use every single day and one of the first things in there is network and connectivity now i had inserted my sim card in here this of course is a four device and Geo and Airtel 4G signal strength was pretty good. There were no call drops that were observed. As far as Wi-Fi is concerned, I have tested both 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz and I've not had any connectivity issues. Now, apart from that, voice over Wi-Fi is working fine. Voice over LT is working absolutely okay. I've not tried carrier video calling, but overall, as far as the network and connectivity is concerned, my experience has been amazing. Now, let's talk about something that is even more interesting and important. That is the battery backup. And as you can see, I do have Accu battery installed. So first, let's talk about the charging speeds over here. It charged 63% in 1 hour 20 minutes. So it will easily take around 1 hour 40 minutes to charge or even 5 minutes more than that. Now, this is using the original 33 watt charger is what I'm talking about. So I feel the charging speeds on Pixel Experience with Perf Kernel are a little on the higher side. This device does have a 5160 milliamp hour cell. So it should take around 1 hour 20 minutes. That is the stock time to charge from 0 to 100, but it will get the job done. It's a big battery and a 33 watt charger. So you're gonna have to plug in for one hour at the minimum. Charging might be slow, but battery backup on Pixel Experience with Perf Kernel is splendid. Now, as you can see over here, on an average, I'm getting around nine to nine and a half hours of screen on time. I've had this ROM for two to three days. The standby time is significantly good and the screen on times are pretty amazing. If you're gaming, you can easily cross four to four and a half hours of gaming on one charge, which in my opinion is good. Good. So what that means is if you own the Poco X3 Pro and you're flashing pixel experience, you're going to have to charge the device once a day. And if you're a light user, maybe once every two days. So battery backup is not really a concern. Charging speeds can be improved. Of course, yes. Now let's talk about security. Safety net on this device is passing just fine. Google Play certification is available. And as far as Widevine L1 is concerned, 
it's completely fine. So you can play your HD content on the Poco X3 Pro. You can use your banking application and all apps which are Play Protect certified will be working just fine on this ROM. So from a security point of view as well, Pixel Experience definitely works as a very, very good daily driver. So let's actually talk about the verdict as far as this ROM is concerned. Now, if you ask me as far as bugs are concerned, I've not noticed any major bugs. In fact, in the last three days that I've been using it, I've not noticed any bugs at all. I've used Bluetooth, I've used Wi-Fi, I've tried the camera, maps, everything, GPS. So I've not encountered any major bugs or overheating. Now, as far as updates are concerned, I think these guys update officially once every one month. So that is something that you have to keep an eye on if you're someone who likes a lot of new updates and stuff. But one update a month, in my opinion, is a pretty decent track record. So all in all, if you ask me, Pixel Experience for the Poco X3 Pro is a splendid ROM. It is a definite daily driver and something you should definitely try if you're not someone who wants hardcore performance as a daily driver material, it's definitely good. Just install Gcam or ANX camera, the one which is of your choice and you should be good to go. So this was a complete review of Pixel Experience for the Poco x3 pro let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video i'll see you in the next one keep smiling take care goodbye